It doesn't matter what softwares you know today, because with time, every technical skill gets outdated. What truly stays with you are the core principles, your mindset, and the way you think about your subject. Welcome to the Foundations for UX Design, a 15-episode series that will take you through all the important lessons and realizations I've had so far as a self-taught UX designer. My name is Ansh Mehra, and I am a product designer and storyteller at Zuddle.com, which is a virtual events hosting platform. In this session, we will be learning some of the most common mistakes students make when they begin their career as a UX designer. I hope you've seen all videos from the series preceding this episode. With that being said, I hope you enjoy this session. So, without wasting any further time, let's get started. Welcome to episode 11 of Foundations for UX Design. In the previous episode, we went through some of my favorite Figma tips and shortcuts. But today, I will be sharing a list of my favorite Figma plugins that I use to make my life simpler. I wouldn't go too deep into demoing the plugins because that would take too much time. I have researched and collected these plugins after a really long struggle. So I know that you would save a lot of time by getting this list instantly. So I believe that once I give you their names, you will eventually figure them out without any spoon feeding. Once we cover the plugins, I'll share some tips on writing your first UX case study. If you have seen all the previous 10 episodes and actually follow through every resource I've mentioned, you will now have enough experience to work on a personal project and write your first case study. There are some valuable lessons that you can learn before you publish your case study on the internet. Then in the end, we will explore some no-code platforms that can help you build your own portfolio without much difficulty. So let's understand how do we install Figma plugins. When you go to your Figma workspace, you'll realize under the top left corner, there's this community tab. Otherwise, if you go to figma.com slash community, all you have to do is search the Figma plugin name here and you will get everything that you're looking for. Figma community has more than plugins. They also have illustrations and templates for FigJam, a lot of stuff. But today we will just restrict our discussion to plugins. Now I've split the entire list into three parts. First, we will cover all the basic plugins, you know, stuff which is easy to understand, easy to implement, good for beginners. Then we will cover intermediate plugins, which are slightly more complex. And then we'll go to the advanced list. These plugins are absolutely out of this world. And if you learn how to use them, they will simply save you hours and hours of time. Now, of course, we'll begin with the first list, which is the basic plugins. As soon as you open a new project, this plugin called Project Scaffold will quickly set up pages in your Figma file. So as soon as you run this plugin, it would automatically add these pages and then you can simply, you know, organize your files clearly. So it would save you a lot of time and it would also help you organize your files at the very beginning of your project. Then we have Round All. You would have noticed that every time you're making frames or scaling stuff, you would have these decimal values which become really weird and they become very problematic during handoff as well. So when you run this plugin, everything would be rounded off to their near whole number which is a huge lifesaver then we have brand fetch there are a lot of cases where you might be working in a website design or some client campaign where you might want to add a specific brand just for mock-ups so for your own personal projects for these non-commercial mock-ups you can use brand fetch where you can write the name of any company and it would automatically fetch you their brand colors, PNGs and SVGs and all of these different things without leaving your Figma tab. Otherwise, you would have to open Google in another tab, look for the company, get their logos and their brand colors. But Brand Fetch would do that for you within Figma itself. So there might be a case where you are designing within a frame, you know that this is perfect and you make it into a component. And once you make it into a component, you realize that you've done it wrong. So there is no proper way to undo that component declaration. You have to delete that component, which is very annoying. So what people do is 
they make an instance of that component, detach that instance and then rework on that component. But this plugin right here, detach component would just quickly undo your component step. It would bring back your frame from the component. So you don't have to go through that reversal route of making an instance, detaching it, then redeclaring the component. Instance finder can allow you to swap a lot of identical instances together. For example, you have a nav bar, you made a component and you use that instance everywhere on 500 frames. So this plugin will quickly select every single instance on the Figma file so that you can select it in one single click and swap all of them from the right side menu. Trust me, this saves you a lot of time. There are cases when you have to delete a specific instance from the entire Figma file. There are instances where you have to swap or make changes. In those cases, this plugin will save you hours of your time. Now we move to intermediate plugins. The first plugin is Ghost and this converts your UI into loading or skeleton screen. So if you have your UI, which is absolutely perfect in just a single click, it would convert it into its skeleton state. So you don't have to make those, you know, loading or zero states or empty states by yourself. You can just simply use the plugin using command backslash. And you know, from the shortcut itself, you can choose the color and it would instantly make the loading state. Ghost UX writer. When you're making your UI explorations, there are a lot of time where you have to write copy, suitable copy, that would not feel off when you're doing your pitches. So what you have to do is you have to make a text layer, open Ghost UX Writer, select the category. Maybe you're making something on payment errors or login errors or all kinds of errors. You have to search for your copy, select your copy, and this plugin will automatically feed this dummy copy into your text layer. Makes your designs look really good and really, really credible. Handy components. When you are just working on your project, you have zero components ready, but you want to brainstorm. You want to just understand how the idea would form. You can use handy components to quickly make a good high fidelity wireframe. So it is a beautiful, beautiful package and it can really help you brainstorm and, you know, put things together very easily. Image editor. There were a lot of cases where I had to quit Figma and open Photoshop, maybe because the brightness of an image was off. Maybe I had to invert a light logo into black. Maybe I had to do some sharpness, some sort of blurriness and all these different kinds of things. So all of the most important and widely popular Image filters are accessible through this plugin right in Figma itself. It is a wonderful plugin. It will absolutely change your image editing capabilities. And you know, it is a very, very useful plugin. Annotate it. This plugin is actually very, very useful when you are done with your designs and you are simply documenting your UX workflows or simply giving it to hand off. Or maybe, you know, you're having a loom video and you want to write notes about your designs for yourself. So what you do is you open this plugin and you select a frame. And once you click on plus, it actually adds these cute little cards. So it would add a number and then a corresponding tag just below the frame. So you don't have to import or duplicate some annotation kit you can bypass all of that and just use this plugin it is highly highly powerful remove bg sometimes you're making an app or a mock-up where you don't want the background you've downloaded an image from unsplash or maybe google but you don't want the background so in most cases a lot of people would edit it on photoshop but if you don't know how photoshop works you can use remove bg and clean backgrounds in a single click you have to register on their website and copy this api link but once you do their free version allows you to get rid of these backgrounds very very easily i use this for my own social media campaign so every time i want to remove the background from my image i just put my image you know run this plugin and i get like a very crisp png of my entire thing this becomes really useful when you're in a hackathon or a presentation or a deck and you just want them to feel that your app is real so this file right here has all kinds of mock-ups uh, strongly recommend to check this out this is a plugin that has so many high quality mockups. It will actually amaze you. I had never ever seen a collection that was this detailed. And if you're working on your personal projects, I would strongly recommend you to just directly use this plugin because why do you need to go to a website, search for a good mockup, download the PSD, then export your Figma JPEG into Photoshop, then export it back from Photoshop to Figma, remove all of those steps, directly use this mockup plugin 
and play with really really high quality mockups directly in Figma. There is one website which is called Moreflax that takes the entire 3D mockup thing to the next level. You can select your device and actually rotate your device in 3D space, change the lighting, change the background color. It is extremely extremely customizable and really high fidelity. So if you want really detailed 3D mockups without opening 3D softwares or learning 3D modeling, this website can really really help you a lot. So this platform right here will allow you to test your website on different breakpoints in a single go. So you don't really have to open multiple tabs or check your website on different devices. You just put the URL and it would show you in real time how the interaction would work. So if I hover over this button, it would show how this hover would look across all devices. Really, really cool stuff. You should definitely check their website out. Then we have 3D Transformer. Sometimes you just want to rotate your frames in 3D space, maybe on any of the three axes, or maybe you just want to have some sort of a perspective effect. So this 3D Transformer can help you do that on your screens. It, it just adds a very nice vibe if you're making a cool poster for your social media campaigns. When you're done with your designs, you're often left with hundreds of frames and it becomes very confusing as to which one is for review, which one is approved, which one is under development. So this plugin right here quickly adds this tag at the corner of your frame so that if someone else is landing on your file, they would know that which frames are approved, which frames are ready for review, which frames are ready for development. So in all of my social media posters and branding, I use Mesh Gradient for backgrounds. You open this, you can generate templates, you can save your templates and do a lot of crazy stuff. It is a really, really smooth plugin. Now we come to the advanced plugins. And this list right here is very powerful. If you have been a power user of Figma, these plugins will simply, simply amaze you. So the first one is Automator, where you can actually automate specific steps on Figma. If you've ever worked on Photoshop, you would know the word actions. So in Photoshop, you could record actions and play them on different files. So this is similar. Imagine having Photoshop actions inside Figma. So in Automator, you can actually record a specific steps and perform them one by one on different files. So there is so much functionality in this one plugin. I would strongly recommend you guys to open this and spend some time when you open their Figma file. They have a very nice deck where they take you through all the steps like instructions. And that deck is very, very accurate. So once you read that, you will know how to use this plugin. Then we have Responsify. Provided that you have added constraints to all of the layers in your frame, Responsify would quickly take your frame and export the same frame into different sizes according to different devices. For example, if you have made a design for iPhone X and you have applied all the constraints properly, Responsify will simply show you how that frame would look for Android, for older iPhones, for newer iPhones and so forth. So it will in just a single click quickly show you how your designs would look on different devices. Then we also have breakpoints. And if you've seen episode one, you would remember this plugin called Responsive. So breakpoints is also similar. It actually shows you in real time how your design would scale as you move from one breakpoint to another. But there is one absolutely ultimate video uploaded on Figma's YouTube channel, which is called Quick Responsive Workflows. They show you how you can actually mix both breakpoints and responsify and do some really, really cool stuff. This video is absolutely stunning must watch. If you are making an application which is primarily in light theme and you want to see how it would look in dark theme, this plugin would quickly allow you to switch your palette. It is slightly complex. There is a proper instruction in the plugin description page. So when you click on this in the Figma community file, when you go on themers page, you would see the instructions. Uh, the basic logic here is that you have to declare two styles. One would be your light theme palette. One would be your dark theme palette. And it would simply swap according to their names. So we've done something similar in one of our previous episodes, but yes, a very, very powerful plugin, very helpful. Then we have Google Sheets Syncs. Sometimes you just have a lot of data to input in your Figma components and you know, it just becomes very tedious copying and pasting stuff from the Word document or maybe the Excel sheet. So this allows you to link your Excel sheet with your Figma file. So in this example right here, they're showing that there's this one component where they have to list properties. So instead of copying and pasting all of these strings one by one, they connect the Google Sheet with their component. So they say that this subtitle is probably connected to this 
you know this title is connected to this and you know that is how figma maps it they check the layers name and they check the column name so this column name would be mapped to this layer right here this thing would be mapped to this thing right here so in a single click it just generates all of these things and it also includes images as well so imagine the amount of time you would save using this plugin now we come to writing case studies See, a very, very important thing to note here is that you need to sell your thought process and not the exact solution because no matter what you worked on, the companies that you apply to will never ask you to solve the exact identical problem. So rather than becoming too specific about that problem or becoming too specific about that solution, you have to show them how deeply you understand the problem. How do you define the problem and how do you think about problems? Now, a lot of students just to stretch their case study, they add fake wireframes and fake surveys. Please don't do that. All recruiters can sense that instantly. Even when they communicate with you, they would know that you've just made up stuff don't do that and of course if you've been following me for a while you would already know about whiteboard.fm if you go on whiteboard.fm and click on case studies you would find a hugely like immensely valuable playlist of people who have worked at amazing companies who have taken you through their case studies trust me this one single resource right here is all you need but you have to document your learnings if you don't document if you don't remember what you learn then it's absolutely useless and in the end i would recommend you to have three really good projects one you've made your notes from whiteboard once you've finished your projects once you've compiled all your learnings from whiteboard and you've written your thing just make sure that you have three really good projects don't think that oh do i have to write like six projects like do i have to show a lot of projects to raise my chances no it doesn't work that way you can have three really good projects why do i not say one really good project because it doesn't show that you have range so you have to show your range and you should always give the recruiter multiple chances to judge you on different case studies now top resources for portfolios because it's very important that you have your domain on the internet we've spoken about this in the previous episodes as well so this is my website right here anshmera.com so i first of all saved money for three months from freelancing from my salary and everything and i bought a domain from google domains which which costed me not too much i think around like 800 or a thousand bucks for a year that is anshmera.com and then i bought a template and hosting from webflow so i had paid separately for a template ready-made template that was available on webflow and then i purchased hosting on webflow like the annual plan for the hosting which was pretty expensive i don't remember how much it was but it is expensive but it is worth it like it is absolutely worth it because now my headache was gone no one is paying me for this portfolio right this is this is sort of like a thing that I had to put of course for some people you know their portfolio itself becomes a project I did not have time and I did not want to invest that kind of time in building my portfolio so I just bought a template from Webflow and edited it according to my needs and I made a lot of edits but yeah the core structure was same and I made changes on Figma all the design changes but I outsourced the Webflow development part so I paid a Webflow developer to code everything according to my Figma files and that saved me a lot of time but a word of caution my website is not a UX portfolio. In fact, my website doesn't even talk about UX. It just talks about my story. And that was my intent from the very first place. So my aim is that, you know, my work is my portfolio. Like whatever that I've been doing at Zuddle, that is my portfolio. So I wanted to show a, a successful life product, you know, parts of a successful product that is running. And uh, that was my aim from the very start. But yes, you can always have your own personal stuff put on your website. Before this website, I had a very old website. And, uh, you know, the skit from episode two has shown you how, how scared I was when I made that website. It took me around four months to build that website. And in that website, I had all my personal projects in place. But yes, I wanted to show you some links that can help you bypass even this so you don't have to buy a domain. So how you do this is that you work and you put your stuff there on Instagram, Behance and Dribble. And then you take all of those links and use this snap link page to compile them together. So this website right here, it gives you a link. It makes a website for you, like a single page website, which works on your computers as well as on your mobile devices. And it's, it just gives you a nice list of all your social media profiles. So rather than making a website, you upload your work on all these popular places. And then you simply use this website to combine them all together. There's also a very cool platform called mm.page. This is actually a website 
website editor that that has everything online so you open and you you literally edit your stuff as if you're editing a word document so it is very very seamless very easy you don't have to pay for the free version but i think you have to pay something when you buy the domain and some other premium features but yes you should definitely check it out if you want a really unique website they have really cool templates and this is obviously much better than just having a link but of course this needs more effort so if you don't want to spend too much time something like a snap link is great but if you have time if you have the bandwidth you should also explore something like mm, dot page then there's carbon made as well they have ready-made portfolios but this is paid but they have really awesome templates this is also no code you just drag and drop your stuff and edit it online so yeah it would save you a lot of time now advanced sessions are available for replays and these sessions are basically complementary skills and you get unlimited replays once you buy them they are available on my graphy profile you know there's a session on how to get a design job that pays you well there's a session on notion documentation how i use notion to manifest and keep a track of what i'm learning then there's discuss my notes from notion i read a lot of books i consume a lot of podcasts so if there is a thought that is absolutely mind-blowing i have discussed it in this course this is like a four-week thing there are a lot of sessions included in this then we have some interesting stuff like interface design micro tips we have learning fast and earning more then systems in figma if you want to build your brand on instagram if you want to make posters and carousel and stuff like that on your instagram using figma how do you do that so that is what i've covered here you can go through the entire catalog on anshmehra.graphy.com i've put the link in description if you liked what you've learned make sure you hit subscribe make sure you hit like and comment your reviews with that being said please take care of yourself keep designing awesome stuff this is Ansh Mehra signing out if you like this video make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button I regularly upload videos on UX design marketing and storytelling